That's not worth turning, Daddy. I know, I know, I've missed Halloween, but I thought I'd share this with you anyway. It's just a very simple mould making and bronze casting video. I hope you like it. I bought this squash in a local greengrocer's and it is in effect a miniature pumpkin. I've constructed this mould housing out of some um, dust extractor ducting, a couple of bits of plywood, a screw and a hot glue gun. The screw is to suspend the uh, pumpkin in the middle of the mould so that there's some space all around it. They're using a, a silicon um, mould material, uh, RTV mould material. And there is the face I've drawn on there. Uh, copied the one from my last project. And I'm using a number 11 scalpel blade, brand new blade, very sharp to cut out the features. I'll then screw that onto the uh, screw. I drilled a hole in the stalk first. I'm just screwing that on and you can see that it's suspended in the housing with a gap all the way around it. Here's the silicon um, mould making material and I'm just adding the activator. It's on some scales, I'm measuring out the exact amount that I need. You've got to be precise with these things. I'm then uh, mixing that and you've got to be very very thorough when you mix it. You've got to try not to incorporate any air in it but it's inevitable that you do. Now I was thoroughly mixed, no streaks and uh, lots of bubbles but I'm pouring it into a second bowl now from a great height. This helps degas it a little bit and it also means that there's no chance of having unmixed um, silicon around the sides of the bowl. If I had a degassing chamber, a vacuum chamber, I would use it at this point to degas it. I'm starting to pour the mould and I'm pouring it in a thin stream from quite a height. I'm trying to get it into all the features in the face. By pouring it from a height you lessen the chance of getting uh, bubbles. It releases a lot of the air from it as it comes down in a thin stream. I'm just trying to make sure I get the pumpkin all covered first. So I've turned it round and I'm just covering the back of it. making sure that there's uh, no voids anywhere. It's all nicely covered. I then sit it down into the uh, mould housing. Then I'm pouring it in a thin stream from up high into the holes in the top of the housing. And just let it gradually rise up. And hopefully you're eliminating a lot of the air. It is much easier if you've got a vacuum chamber and you can degas the, uh, the mould stuff first. You can get rid of all the air before you even start to pour. But it's quite runny, this is very good for picking out detail, but it is slow setting. Not a bad thing because it gives you plenty of working time. I'm just filling up the mould. Getting right up to the top. The pumpkin and the piece of wood actually start to lift at this point. So it's overflowing a little bit from the sides, but that's not an issue. I'm just going to weigh the top down and squash that down. Make sure it's nicely lined up so the pumpkin sits central in the housing. And I weigh it down with a mini anvil. Just holds it all in place. This is the next day. I take the screw out to start with, lever off the top, and then uh, I have to use a chisel then. And I done do the seam down the side. I did cut a seam in the side of this to help demold it. And I'm just cutting around the hot glue. I've pulled the base off, and now I'm going to start cutting open the mould. I'm doing this with a very sharp scalpel, a number 11 blade. And I'm cutting it in a squiggly line. That way it helps the mould relocate back into the same place when you put it back together. If you do a straight cut, it won't locate positively. Whereas a nice wiggly cut, 
it could only go together in one one way. I'm going to the centre. With this shape object you can just about get away with just doing a split down one side. More complex moulds you have to do in several parts. But with this I can pull the pumpkin out and it all springs back together quite nicely. I had to do a little bit of tidying up with the scalpel but there we are, we can put the uh, plastic ring back round the outside, tape it up, I've put some masking tape round, all the cracks line up, and I'm now using some uh, epoxy resin to pour the mould, and that's bronze powder, that's actual bronze, proper bronze metal, and it's very fine powder, especially for casting. And the first thing I do is I pour a little bit of the bronze powder inside the mould and then shake it around and what it does is it sticks to the inside of the mould, it dusts the inside of the mould. Here I'm uh, measuring out the, um, the resin and the hardener and I'm adding a bit of black pigment powder. This isn't my usual resin, I usually use a polyester resin, but it had gone solid in the bottle because I haven't used it for a while. And this is a new resin to me. Uh, I haven't tried this one before, so it was a little bit of a gamble. But I start by mixing the pigment and the hardener together to form a black resin. And I mix that really, really thoroughly. And I decant some into a second pot just to make it easier to handle. I then start adding the bronze powder. The secret to adding the uh, bronze is to get as much powder in there as you can really without it becoming too viscous that it won't pour nicely. So I add it bit by bit and keep stirring it and leave it to stand and that helps degas it, some of the bubbles will rise up out. This is another time you could de do with a degassing chamber, you know, a vacuum chamber. And I'm doing both pots, adding bronze to both pots. The more bronze you can add, the more metallic the effect will be. Uh, but like I say, it on it too thick so it won't pour. It's difficult to say exactly how much because each mix is different. But uh, I, take, I keep checking the viscosity of it. And add in a little bit more. By dusting the inside of the mould you ensure that the surface layer is going to be bronze rich. Some people don't even add bronze to the filling resin. I'm pouring some of the resin now into a giant 50ml syringe. Just decanting it into the syringe. It's just an easy way of getting it into the mould. You can see the bronze, how it's the bronze powder, how it's stuck to the outside of the mould. Well, that's what's going to be happening inside the mould as well. So you get that nice bronze finish. And I'm just syringing the bronze resin into the mould now. Just pushing that all in, and then it's a case of rolling it around so that it covers all the outside or the inside of the mould which will be the outside of the casting when, you, when it's demoulded. This is the second pot, which I'm now syringing in. So I'm just topping it up a bit. I haven't filled it right up, because it's going to be hollow. So I'm rolling it and rolling it and rolling it and rolling it in all different directions so that the entire inside of the mould has got an even coating of resin. I would not recommend this resin uh, for this job, really a polyurethane um, or a polyester resin would be much better. I was rolling this thing around in my hands for an hour and a half before it set. It was really tedious. That's a load of rubbish, Daddy. It did eventually set enough for it not to flow and I stood it upright and put it in the uh, airing cupboard overnight so it properly cured. Here I'm untaping the mould the next day and then removing the uh, cuff or band from around it and then it's just a case of splitting it open and peeling the mould from the uh, bronze and pulling it out you have to be careful not to rip the mould but uh, it teased out alright 
It came out remarkably well. It's hollow, you can tap it, it's, you know, it's very hollow. And there's a few little bubbles on the face, but the rest of it was remarkably good. And uh, here I've cleaned the stalk up, and now I'm buffing it with a fine abrasive pad. This is 1500 grit. And you don't want to over buff it, but if you buff the surface, um, you'll come up just like the bronze. It'll, you can buff through that surface layer if you're not careful, but using one of these fine pads is very little danger of that. And it works really well. There you go, before and after. That's the two of them. An exact copy. The silicon uh, does make a really good mould. Hello folks, here's the little bronze pumpkin. All finished, all polished up, and you can see the metal there, and it comes up beautiful. It looks just like you know real bronze. Well it is real bronze, it's just set in resin rather than uh, being foundry cast. And it's come out nicely, I'm pleased with it. A few bubbles here and there in the face which I half expected. I will make some more of these but I will use the proper resin that, um, that I like using rather than the epoxy which was a bit of a pain. I was rolling that uh, mould around for an hour and a half waiting for it to gel up and set. But it's come out very well. Literally just, what, three bubbles on the face, whereas uh, the rest of it is absolutely immaculate. And it has polished up amazingly well. Very pleased with that. Now, more of an exercise in simple mould making and simple bronze casting. But I will make a few of these. I'll make a decent master copy, and then I, if I wreck the mould, I can make another mould then. There's the original before and after. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all my, to all my subscribers. I really appreciate it and all the lovely comments. Um, got a really good response to the uh, Halloween lantern I did, the pumpkin that I turned out of you. Hopefully you'll like this one too. Back soon with some more videos. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some inspiration to try some different things. Anyway, we'll be back soon with some more videos. More videos coming soon.